We're live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny and Sergio show episode, I don't know. But we have a special guest. Really excited to chat with him. He's a young cat out of New York. His name is Andrew Rampula. I hope I'm not butchering it. Rampula, Rampula. Close enough, Rampula. <laughs> yeah, he runs the soft washing company, the soft washing company. And it's on track to do uh, what $600,000 this year. Is that right? Yeah, we're probably going to be closer to like four to five, um, but yeah, in that kind of half a million range. Four to five hundred K in the second year. That's absolutely insane. At 20 years old, guys, this guy is 20 years old. For context, to just how impressive this is, when Sergio and I started our window cleaning business at 19, we did $5,000 our first year and 10000 our second. So mm -hmm. putting up some freaking big numbers, dude, for uh, <laughs> only being in business two years. Really excited to chat with you and just learn more about your story and kind of what the goals are, what the vision is for this, and how you grew so fast. So, Andrew, welcome to the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Start with, uh, dude, you're 20, man. Like, why soft washing? What's the story? What's the come up? Take us from the beginning. Yeah, so it's kind of a funny story. Um, I kind of just fell into it. Obviously, no one really wakes up one day and is like, man, I want to wash roofs for the rest of my life. <laughs> so um, I, uh, I was kind of more in like the online money space from like, you know, 16, 17-ish. Um, I started off, you know, your kind of standard funnel with the, the drop shipping um, and then the SMMA. And I was kind of, you know, buying courses, trying to, you know, navigate, find my way around at like 17 years old. Um, you know, I landed a couple clients here and there just with like your standard like agency sort of thing. And it was the summer before my senior year of high school. And I kind of, I was very low on cash. I wanted some more money to invest back into education. And I saw a TikTok of uh, this one guy, Matt, who said you can make $100 an hour pressure washing. I was like, man, like, I, I can do that. Um, was it forever self-employed? No, it wasn't. It was uh, a different. He doesn't really make content anymore. I, ha I did see his stuff afterward. I watched a lot of his videos, um, but I forgot his last name. It was Matt something. But it, it, I know it got like a couple million views that one video, and that was it. And I was like, man, I, I can do that. It's more money than I'm making right now. Um, so next day, I, I knew my dad had a pressure washer, so I borrowed that and I started going door to door. Um, and that was I, it was the worst pitch ever. It was like, hey neighbor, um, I'm saving up money for college. Can I wash your walkway for forty dollars? And that, and that was literally it. Um, and, and I made, say no, and then you'd be like, are you sure? Please? <laughs> really? Please? <laughs> I'll do it for 30. I but, get it, um, I get it. Yeah, so it was one of those things. And I ended up making 500 bucks in three days. And that was kind of like the first just like paradigm shift. Because, you know, I was 17. That was, I was used to making, you know, 200 bucks working, you know, 30 hours busting tables for a weekend. So it was like that huge kind of like paradigm shift, like, wow, like this might actually be something. Um, and then I went on to do, I think eight or 9,000 that first month um, with door to door and Facebook groups. And I was like, holy crap, like that's, it's more money than I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, so I did that all for profit. all pretty much all profit. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I had my dad's like gas and dollar pressure washer, gas bleach. And that was literally it. Um, so that just, yeah, literally went all into my pocket and I ended up just buying a car with that money. Um, then I had my senior year of high school. Um, I did one more like summer before going off to college. Um, I think I did around like 30 or 35,000 that summer. Um, and that was kind of like the next paradigm shift. Like, okay, it's not just like a side sort of thing to make some extra pocket cash. Like this can actually, you know, be a real business. Um, I really wanted to do a gap year. Um, my parents were super against it. So I ended up just going to college. And the whole first semester, all I could think about was business. I was like, man, like I'm kind of just wasting my time here. Um, so I ended up dropping out. I went full time. Um, and the first seven months between um, washing and Christmas lights, we did 220. And so that, that was like, kind of, last year was kind of a pivotal year for me. Um, and I actually ended up going back to school last year. Um, funny enough, just because I, I really missed the, the whole experience. Um, but I'm dropping out of classes again, and now I kind of just live there part time, <laughs> and here we are. Wait, right, so you dropped out? You did 220k? You're like, I kind of miss, I kind of miss the social <laughs> aspect, or I kind of just miss the vibes. Go back, and then have an even better year, and you drop out again. 
Pretty much, yeah. So I dropped out. I went back for a year of classes, which was you know this past year. Um, and then I was like, why am I wasting time with classes if I just, like I have my apartment? Like, why not just not do classes and not waste the time and the, and the money with it? So that's what we're doing this year. What were you going to school for? I was going to school for for marketing. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, but, dude, dude. So such a similar story to us. Well, I mean, Sergio was a bit of a nerd. He he got a civil engineering degree. I ended up finishing going to school for business, entre- entrepreneurship uh, concentration. So not marketing, but entrepreneurship, which stupidest fucking major ever. Um, and looking back, it's interesting because I'm like, dude, I could have spent so much more time on the business if I had just dropped out. Because it's not like I'm going to school to get a job i'm gonna keep doing the window i ended up continuing the window cleaning business after so i always say if you're just gonna go to school for business and you're already making this much like just go full-time dude i think you made a good decision so now what uh you said you're gonna pace what to you said four or five hundred yeah probably closer to four and what's what's the team size look like what is the yeah how many employees you have stuff like that yeah so right now um it's just one full-time technician um it's uh, and then any like we have two rigs right now, so he takes that kind of full time throughout the week, and then any other like side stuff that we can't fit in with the one rig, I'll go out. Or we have a, a couple like part time, just some of my buddies from from school um, that are home from the summer that they'll hop out and take the other rig, just kind of button up. Um, I handle like all of the office stuff, um, you know, all of the admin, all of the sales, all of the marketing, and then we have uh, two door to door guys that just work on commission. Oh, really? Just straight commission? Just straight commission, I, yeah. Like, yeah, kind of like your, you know, like, pest control sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. How much, how much on average are they bringing in per, per week, per month? Yeah, um, I know, I'd actually have to look at the numbers, I don't know for sure, but I know last month um, they did pretty well. They probably averaged around, like, one, like, around, like, a thousand a day, if I had to give you, like, a rough estimate. Combined so, or each? Combined. They'll knock, like, a couple hours each day. Um, so they'll get like one or two sales. Um, our average ticket for like house washing is right around like five to six hundred, and then overall it's right around nine hundred, with kind of the bigger ticket stuff like roof washing and packages and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what's what's like a commission split on that? Yeah, so they make fifteen percent on any any work they bring in. Solid, dude. I don't see a lot of people in the window cleaning, pressure washing space utilizing door to door. So I think that's like really cool that you guys are doing that. Yeah, I know. Um, you, you guys know Eric, right? Eric, what's his last Twitter? name? Egg did it. Is his uh, his Twitter handle? Oh he's, yeah, yeah, I know Eric. Yeah, he's big on door to door. I know. I first got into door to door last year, um, just from uh, Josh Lester's content. I didn't even know it was a thing, really. Like, I, obviously, I started with door to door, but I didn't realize like how much there was to it. Um, so that's honestly, I think it was like a quarter of our business last year came from just door to door. Yeah, no, dude, one the number one regret I have looking back is not utilizing door-to-door because the one week, the one week we, we had a door-to-door team, it was my one of my buddies from high school who was selling pests in Utah, and he was out in town. He's like, dude, let me go sell some window cleaning for you. So we were like, okay, like let's do it. Goes out, dude, they sold five grand in one day. They sold five grand in a day. Dude, they sold this one house where they sold everything. They got they got them for lights. They got them for gutter cleaning. They got them for a roof wash. They got them for the windows. Um, and then they got a few more in that area and we could have just ripped so much more revenue had we just continued to do door to door. So, um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool because once you track that stuff, like we have a sales team now, it's, it's virtual though. But once you know, like, Hey, I have this many people, I can produce this much revenue, right? So you got two guys producing a thousand dollars a day. So just why not add four guys and get to $2,000 a day? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's super cool. I mean, it's it's it feels like a lot like outbound with you know any of like the the online money thing. Like you send X amount of cold emails, X amount of cold DMs, yeah. and you know your numbers. You're you're bound to get X amount of clients. So it's kind of like the the adjacent for home services, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What uh? What's the what's like the big big goal for for the softwash company? Like, what's your plan with this? Yeah, I um originally wanted to kind of scale it to the point where we're doing like one to 1.5 in top line um, and then kind of just have it coast. Um, I'm leaning more towards the side of exiting like sooner than later, not for like a big big exit or anything, but I um, I don't like look down the line and see myself like getting excited for building a huge soft washing company. Um, I, I like the marketing and the sales stuff a lot more. Um, so I've 
been thinking of kind of pivoting into more of like a um, marketing sort of service and taking everything I've learned for the, you know, the past like three, four years. Um, and, you know, going back to the roots of <laughs> kind of what I started with, with the, the marketing and having some sort of like home service, um, you know, like, uh, like done with you marketing sort of thing. Um, so we'll kind of see where things go. I'm kind of just, you know, cashing, you know, just kind of building up the stockpile of cash with what I got right now. Um, and, you know, finish out this season, do maybe one more and kind of see where we're at at that point. But I, I know for me, at least, it's not going to be like the end all be all. Uh, I'm not going for like a $10 million exit with this thing. But, you know, we'll see for sure. I'm curious, do you think the grass is greener? Um, maybe. I, I know I'm 20 and I, I try not to, you know, look for the, the shiny object. Um, and I try to kind of ask myself, what do I really want? Um, but it could be, it could be a case of that. I, I feel like I'm not experienced enough to know whether I, or whether or not, like it, it's a case of like shiny objects and I'm just ready to, to jump to the next thing. What did you like about the marketing agency that you don't like about the pressure washing business? I think the biggest thing, um, which this just might be like a little bit of a limiting belief is like the fully remote aspect. Um, I, I transparently don't like living here. Um, and I'm kind of stuck here for now. So I think that was kind of like the biggest thing and just being fully remote, being able to kind of work for, from wherever. Um, and in my mind, that was kind of like the next best pivot rather than committing to the next, like, you know, two to three years or whatever, staying here and making this a thing where it can be fully remote. Um, I've had kind of glimpses where I've been able to, you know, step away and have things just run on their own. Um, but nothing to the point where it's like, okay, this can, I can, you know, move to Miami or whatever and have the business run without me. But that could just be a complete, you know, thing with skills. Andrew, Andrew, good. you know, we teach people how to make home service businesses remote, right? I, I, <laughs> do, that, yes. Man, <laughs> I do know that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a valid point. You want to move to my, I heard you mentioned Miami. You want to, is that where you want to go? I do. I do want to move to Miami. That's where all the marketing cats are, at. dude. Every, it's it's the it's the it's the eighteen to twenty three year old funnel, dude. I know. <laughs> it, it, I see it so often, man. The grass is not always greener, though. Dude. I, I say this because I've done both. We did home services for yeah. five years. We ran an internet business for almost three years now. So I've been been in this game for a bit, despite still being relatively young. And we, Serge and I, talk about this all the time. It's like, dude, if we went back and continue to run orange window cleaning as opposed to starting from scratch something brand new, thinking the grass would be greener, orange window cleaning would be worth so much money right now because it's a tried and true traditional business with proven activity. Uh, people are buying and selling window cleaning companies all the time. Uh, with agencies, until you get to a really high revenue level, it's really hard to sell an agency because of a lot of the like founders tied to the sales. Um, hey, let me just interrupt real quick to tell you about Home Service Academy. It's the company Sergio and I run. Home Service Academy is essentially a business in the box where our team will actually roll up our sleeves and help you build a house cleaning business and run it completely remotely from anywhere in the world, from dirt to however big you actually want to take it. To date, we've helped over 1,500 people start and grow their existing house cleaning businesses all across the U.S. and Canada. It's something we've gotten very, very good at. And if you've been looking to dip your toe into entrepreneurship, whether that's to go full-time in a business, to replace an income, or just build a side hustle that produces you an extra whatever amount of money you want to make on the side, on top of your current 9 to 5, then click the link in the bio and book a call with our team. It's completely free, and at the very least, you'll see what it looks like to actually run one of these businesses. The time commitments, the amount of money it costs to actually start, and every good and bad thing that can come with running one of these. So again, if that's something you're interested in, click the link in the bio and let's get back to the pod. A lot of your acquisition channels are probably gonna be from personal brand, stuff like that. And so you gotta build it really, really big in order to get an exit. So there's there's pros and cons, man. I would argue like, maybe give pressure washing a chance, man. See what it's like. Now for you guys, if you could go back, would you have kind of stuck with orange window cleaning and built it up to the point where you could exit for like a huge multiple or are you kind of happy with you know the path you guys took and the pivot you made i'm happy i'm, I'm happy i'll answer i'm not gonna speak for sergio but i'm happy the path we took but it's still i still wonder you know i'm still left wondering because 
the thing about the difference between internet businesses and traditional businesses is like orange window cleaning was very very hard to start we started with 150 bucks we reinvested everything to buy the trucks get the wraps buy the equipment get all the uniforms train the employees like so much time and money went into that and it was very difficult to start but once we got up to you know 50 60 70 thousand dollars a month it was like just coasting it was very predictable it was very sustainable um now going into the internet business, this was very, very easy to start. We went zero to 2.8 million with half of that, 1.5 million of profit in nine months, right? So to go from that, it's like, oh my God, this is the best business in the world. But just like any, any business has its, has its challenges, the challenge of the internet business is, okay, well now you start to hire, you start to um, put fixed costs into the business. Well, now it's just like any other business, except now in the whole coaching consulting world, you're having to sell a bunch of packages to people to cover costs. And I'm glad, solvable problem though, because what we did was we created a backend where we ascend about 20% of our people that come in to a yearly backend where they renew 80% of the time. So very high yearly recurring, right? It made the business a lot more sustainable, so we fixed that problem, right? But we had to go through a ton of shit year two after this crazy run up and get humbled in order to fix all of that, right? And so there's always gonna be the trade-offs that you don't think about because uh, from most people's perspective, you think, oh my God, you sell courses, this and that, and this and that. I mean, if you're just selling a $400 PDF, it's a lot different than when you have actual coaching staff and you have 20 full-time W-2 employees that you have to cover the cost for every, and all US-based, by the way, you have to cover the cost for every single month. And so going from that to last year of all that bullshit we were dealing with thinking back to orange window cleaning it's like damn i would kill for having my list of 2000 window cleaning customers that need that windows are getting dirty all the time you know what i mean yeah so every business has its trade offs but i can't give you a solid answer whether it's a yes or a no if i could go back what i would do because what's happened has happened and and we're going to we're not quitters so we're going to build hsa to be as big of a business as we possibly can um that's my answer what about you sir yeah no i mean i will say that starting home service academy has made us better marketers, better salespeople because we've had to be. Because when you're in the internet game, uh, you're competing with every other opportunity to make money. That's drop shipping. That's FBA. That's the real estate stuff. So we went from competing with the old dudes that have a freaking mop and a squeegee to competing with some of the best marketers in the world. So that came with its challenges, and I think it's made us better marketers. Because knowing what I know today, I can go and scale a window cleaning business to $10 million a lot easier and a lot quicker than before. Like, it was just, like Johnny said, it was, like, so easy to make a lot of money in the beginning with, with the online business. So, I don't know. Like, do I regret it? No, because I've learned so much. But um, it's, it's very possible that we would get back into the home service space, knowing what we know today. Yeah, I know uh, Hormozy talks a lot about kind of the, the same thing, like the traditional versus like the online business and the and the difference between the curves, very similar to what you guys are talking about, how, you know, with the traditional businesses, whether that be, you know, home service company or like a brick and mortar chain, it's kind of more of like a pra parabola um, where it's super slow to start and you really don't see much financial upside until kind of the very end. And that's where everything sort of compounds and you get that big exit, but it's a lot harder to you know, whether the, the five, 10 years or whatever it takes to get there versus mm -hmm. like it's inversed with the online thing where it's kind of a huge mm -hmm. run up at first, but it tailors off really quick and you can't really scale past, you know, what you can with the traditional thing and have that huge exit similar to what you guys are talking about. And, and I think that's why it attracts us, like us young, super ambitious dudes, because they like, we just want to make $10 million today. And you, it feels like you can do that with online businesses, uh, but it, it is harder than that. You know, yeah. but you could make a lot of money doing it. No, I, sure. I definitely agree. It's like, especially because I'm like 20, it's like, man, I just want to make money. I'm not worried about the, the 10, $20 million exit when I'm 30, but it's definitely more of a short-sighted view. Um, but, but absolutely, I, I definitely think it's, it's harder when you're, when you're younger and you see all of like the flashy things and, and whatnot. It's easy to get distracted. Yeah. Bottom like, line... Oh, we, we talked we talked to the founder of Bubba Gump Shrimp like last 
like last week or two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And just throughout our journey, we've we've come to know a lot of like multimillionaires, like ten million, hundred million dollar guys. And one thing that they all have in common is they did a pretty boring business for a long time. And it's hard to like see that when you're twenty. 24 years old and and think like you want to do that too but i mean dude that's how these guys are worth a hundred million dollars you know it's it's interesting yeah yeah i mean dude bottom line is business is difficult no matter what vehicle you pick and it, it'll humble you dude you think you you think you're the shit it will humble you promise and uh, I actually talked to Julius for context to anybody listening Julius runs a pressure washing company near Andrew's pressure washing company they're around the same age and he's also on Twitter, and he was one of my first friends when I started tweeting on Twitter, making content. He actually DM'd me probably two weeks ago because we follow each other on our personal Instagrams. He's like, dude, how you been? I was like, I'm good, man. How are you? He's like, oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm getting into high-ticket sales. I was just like, oh, my gosh, dude. No, please, for the love of God, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, bro. Don't do it. He's like, I'm just, I'm just burnt out of the pressure washing. I'm not passionate about it. And what I realize now that I didn't realize back then is that – Every, b- business looks the same when you hire people. Everything looks the same because eventually whatever you're doing that sucks ass right now, you will hire someone to do it. And you'll be able to delegate that out, whether it's an internet business, a traditional business, and it's just going to come down to how do you find the best people and how do you maintain and how do you retain the best people? That is what I've learned. And so I don't point being grass is not greener, man. It's just it, it all looks the same. It doesn't matter what you sell. Now, you, in, you brought up something interesting. I kind of want to talk about passion a little bit and kind of get your take and, and dive into that a little bit more because I feel like that comes up a lot um, about, you know, being passionate about a business or not or sticking to the thing that makes money. I mean, kind of what would you say your take is on should you pursue something that you're passionate about or should you kind of more look at what your end game is and, and follow the path that's going to kind of best align with that? Dude, I don't, I'm not a big fan of passion. Go ahead, Sergio. Well, I was going to say, like, going back to, like, I know people who pursued passions and made a lot of money, and I know people who chose businesses that they weren't passionate about and made a lot of money. So when you look at that, how can you say one is the right answer? I think you can make a lot of money in both things. Um, it's just up to you. And, like, that's a crappy answer, but, like, that's what it is. For me personally, I don't I don't buy the whole passion thing because I, I hold that belief of, hey, Businesses look, looks the same anyways, right? It's it's all a game of of numbers. Are you are you do you have good gross margins? Are, is your marketing efficient? It all looks the same, dude. When you look at the numbers, so I don't really care so much about what I'm selling and what my business is and if I'm passionate about it or not. But I'm passionate about business, and because I'm passionate about business, it makes it really fun no matter what business we've done, whether that be starting the window cleaning business, starting marrying a mop for my mom, the cleaning company, or Home Service Academy now, which. It, now that we're three years into this and we've we've put a lot of work in this business, which has been super, super difficult, um, it's been very rewarding at the same time because business is just a never-ending game of figuring shit out. So that's what I love. Awesome. And I, I think a lot of it plays into what you're solving for, too. Like some people are happy making 10K a month and doing the thing they love and other people like you and, and me and I'm sure like you know a bunch of the other people watching this are passionate about business itself and they, they like playing the game and, and it's not so much as you know doing the art or doing the thing and you know being the tradesman um so i i definitely think it's a lot to do with, with what you're solving for are you trying to build the biggest business are you trying to have a lifestyle company um but yeah it's definitely an interesting topic to kind of like because i know it does really come up a lot yeah yeah it does come up a lot i find it comes up a lot with a lot of people that are just like i don't know there's a direct correlation between Rarely do I hear someone who's worth like a hundred million or above say like, uh, do what you're passionate about, follow your passion. But I rarely hear that. And I only hear do what you're passionate about from people who haven't started a business. Yeah. So yeah. that being said, man, um, dude, what, do you need any help with anything? Is there anything we can help you with while we're on here? I think it'd be cool to, to figure out if there's anything you're struggling with in your business that you feel like, oh, I don't really know the answer to this or this has been Honestly, really annoying man, me. The- biggest bottleneck i have right now is myself for sure and just committing to the thing um other than that i think my weakest my weakest link is definitely hiring 
Um, I think that's what I have the least experience with. I think I have the marketing pretty pretty well. I think I have the sales thing pretty well. Obviously not perfect or to the level that you know I need to be eventually. Um, but I definitely think the bottle right neck right now is kind of like hiring and, and leading and building a team in that sort of regard. Um, Dude, we're the same exact way, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, and that's what made the, the business not as enjoyable back then is just we felt like we couldn't hire the best people like for the team and then the culture was like kind of not the best. So I feel you on that one. Yeah, it's, it's hard, especially when you're 20 too, because now that I've, I've grown, I've been in business for a while, like we have, a, we have a, you know, 20 people, our management team like is 27, we've got a 31 year old, we've got a lot of people who are older than us that we manage now. And one big thing that we struggled with when we were running the business at your age was we would feel like, oh, we can't manage like more experienced older guys because we're so young, right? And it's something that gets better with time. But the hiring problem, looking back, what we what we coach on and what we would have should have done is just recruit all the time. Like always be closing ABCs, right? Always be closing, always be recruiting, right? The two ABCs. And so because you're hiring for kind of labor where anybody can do it, you're really looking for is this person a good culture fit? And even if you don't have, like, you feel like you don't have a culture, you are the culture. So the way you get better at hiring is by continuing, do like five, in, 10 interviews a week. Like just set out time to do five or 10 interviews a week and screen all the fucking time. And as long as you do that, you're going to get, it's just like dating, dude. You go, you, you shoot a hundred shots, you'll land 10 dates. You might not like nine of those girls, but that's what it takes to find the one. Same thing with hiring, especially in blue collar, uh, low level uh, service businesses where you don't need a ton of like licensing. It's just a game of volume and recruiting, volume and recruiting. And we've done this for 1500 house cleaning businesses and people are recruiting house cleaners, right? And they have solid teams of house cleaners and they do it because we drill into their head. You need to be recruiting all the time, even though it's boring, it's grueling, it's ass. It'll make you so good at business. Yeah, yeah dude, I back know. in the day. We'd put up one Indeed post, talk to like six people, hire one of them, and then be surprised that we can't find someone good. Like, that's what we did. So, yeah. That's what it takes, man, to, to build a, a rock star team. Yeah, that, no, I, I'd imagine. Um, cleaning, I pressure washing, home service businesses. You're not in the marketing business. You're in the pressure washing business. You're in the recruiting business, bro. Like, just, just shift your mentality that way, and it'll solve all your problems. Yeah, you'll get more I um, referrals. You'll get more rebookings. You'll get more five star reviews um, because you send good people out. I think that's definitely kind of a shift I need to make. Because in the past, I've always kind of thought it as I'm in like the customer service slash marketing business. Um, but the more I do it, I definitely agree. I think it, you're totally right in, in the fact that it's you know, like you said, a recruiting business and, and finding the right people. For you guys, what was um, how did you go from you know one to two employees to ten and and fifteen? What what did that kind of whole process look like? Was it just more of the same, it's just recruiting and, and kind of filling positions that needed to be filled, or what did that kind of look like for you? Dude, revenue, like it just comes down to just making more money so that you have more more things to fill in with with people. But like I feel like we did this early on where we tried to delegate too many things too early on. Like we got too excited about. Like, okay, now I'm going to replace myself with this person. But, like, too early on, like, the first thing is always revenue. And you want to push your team to, like, basically be at 110% capacity. And then you hire someone else. So it just comes down to you need to have money coming in the business all the time. And you need to have more money coming in the business. Yeah, for you, for you, it's going to look like what are your unit economics? Like how much can a truck produce and how much do you need to have on the calendar in order to produce that? Once you have that, what, and you're on the truck too. Now let's get a second truck. Let's get a second truck going. Let's take the dude that you've been working with. Let's make him a team lead, throw him on the other truck while you go and train the new guy. To Sergio's point, we delegated way too quickly. We try to pull ourselves out of the field so fast. And in, in a home service based business, you being in the field builds culture. And you can, you can pull yourself out, but it's going to take a little bit. It's probably going to take a little bit longer than you think. Most people, especially with W-2s. That's why we hired contractors eventually. But with W-2s, you need to build that culture and you need to build your leads. Because your leads are going to be the ones who take over for you eventually. And 
is going to be what allows you to get out of the field. And so you do that slowly but surely by knowing your unit economics. Okay, a truck can produce me $30,000. I've got it booked consistently over three months at 90% capacity. Let's crank up my spend. Let's spend a little bit more and let's, let's recruit another guy and train him up. Right? So the guy you're working with ideally is probably going to be your lead. At least I would hope so. And if he's not, you should probably get rid of him and replace him. Um, or else you're just wasting your time. If you're going to try to build for an exit. Because you do want you do want um, the business to to run without you. Like if if you're still in the field doing the cleaning, you're not going to get a, a large exit. People aren't going to want to buy a job. There there are people that will want to buy a job, but it's you're not going to get it. You're not going to command a high enough price that that I assume you'd want. So um, that's what that's what it kind of looked like for us. But our problem was we try to cheat the grind, bro. You can't cheat the grind. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually you'll you'd pull one out and they'd be the general man the kind of the operations manager overseeing everything, making sure the trucks are ready, the equipment's ready, going job to job, filling in and jumping in and when when someone uh, calls out or someone needs extra help on a job they will pull up probably around three trucks, but eventually that's what you would be doing yeah but it's like are you willing to do that for the next two years yeah, that's kind of what I've been trying to. To decide, <laughs> because yeah. if you think about marketing, dude, just go do marketing right now. Why well, go through all that? Yeah, I, I, I personally, I, I think you should, because it's like you're a smart dude. You come from the internet marketing world. You will crush your competition because they don't know how to do that shit. So if you just learn the recruiting component and the delegation component and the managing component, you'll kill it. It's gonna suck for a couple of years, but. <laughs> Everything sucks one way or another, yeah, right. especially when you're starting from scratch because you're building from the bottom up. Yeah, that, I think the uh, the zero to one is always, is always kind of the hardest getting off the ground. Absolutely, and then like yeah, like it sounds like you guys kind of are, are smooth sailing at this point, especially with you know orange window cleaning. You said like once you got to that kind of like half a million dollar mark, things were uh, were a lot more consistent, a lot a lot smoother. Yeah, yeah. This now, now orange window cleaning will do over a million this year. Um, so it's pretty awesome to see just because of, of all the marketing we did up front and the reputation we built. Um, and now the new owner's really good at staffing and he's, he's kind of in that like operations role, kind of bouncing around, uh, job to job, but he's got his crews and it's, it's a great sustainable company. Um, and these businesses can be built really, really massive. Do you look at Ned Stevens, uh, gutter cleaning? They sold for a bag dude. And all they do, they sold to private equity. And within Ned Stevens, they're in a bunch of different states, all corporate owned. They now just look for other gutter cleaning companies and they just buy a ton of gutter cleaning companies and they have a massive gutter cleaning business. Do you, you guys have any um, um, involvement anymore in orange window cleaning? Any like equity or, or consulting, any sort of that, uh, that kind of thing? We still get some royalty checks, but no, no equity. Um, yeah, and then the owner will call me every now and again if he needs something, and I'll help him out. But pretty smooth sailing. You should see if you could get connected with a guy. His name is – what was the guy's name? He ran that big soft washing company in um, Georgia. You know what I'm talking about? Young Cat. Wesley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wise guy is wise pro or something. Yes. Have you talked yes. to Wesley? I haven't talked to him. I know of him. I know of him, and um, I forgot the other guy's name. But uh, Northwest Pro Wash um, are the two like big ones that that I have kind of heard heard of doing like you know three four hundred k a month right now. Um, but I have seen a lot of Wesley stuff. And they're both young too, in their twenties. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're twenty years old, man. You could crush wise guys. But it's good. It's it's just a testament to like, hey, there's a blueprint there, you know? Because I know a big thing we I would get in my head was like is it scalable is it scalable is this the best business like dude a business can be as big as you want it to as long as you're willing to do the work yeah absolutely i know um it because that, that was when i first got into this is like do can this even get to you know xyz amount a month or whatever can this be as big as i want it to um but yeah definitely i i know when i first saw uh, those two guys, it definitely broke a bit of a, a limiting belief in kind of seeing them, you know, scale to such a high degree. Because I've always been under the premise that like a labor business like this is super hard to get past, you know, 80, 90, 100K a month. You don't really see it very often. Um, 
especially with, you know, some of the companies that have been around for 10, 20, 30 years, um, it's not like super, super common when you have like that big of a business. Um, so seeing them has been super cool. Um, you know, just kind of the boring same industry that I'm in with soft washing doing, you know, whatever it is, almost, you know, four or five, six million dollars a year. Um, and then even, uh, do you know Aaron? Um, on Twitter, he is the Power Rolling Suds with the Power Washing franchise. We just <laughs> interviewed him last week. It's oh, coming up okay. today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, same thing with that. Just like different ways to to scale. With he's doing something super cool. I just saw one of his. Fr- I was in St. Augustine for the weekend, um, and I saw one of their yard signs up. I was like, oh, look at that! It's Rolling Suds. <laughs> dude, he's yeah, got dude, a badass like, business. I don't. I don't think you don't see a lot of hundred k a month pressure washing businesses because the business model is broken, but it's because of the type of people that get it, get in that business. Are just not the type of people that want to start scaling to like 100k a month. Like they're like you said, they're cool with doing five, 10k a month profit, and like they'll just keep it like that for 40 years and then do whatever with the business. But it's not the business model; it's the competition. And like like we said before, you coming from the marketing space, dude, you can crush it. And you really, really see that in like a lot of the Facebook groups. Like, I don't know if you guys are in the window cleaning Facebook groups. Oh yeah, they're they're toxic. I'm banned. I'm banned from them. (laughs) Yeah, they're toxic. Yeah, it's bad. Like all the big window cleaning groups. If you're not putting a squeegee to glass on the daily, like they don't want to talk to you. No, (laughs) not even if you want to just help them and like give them some sauce. It's crazy. I remember. I remember when they were like, "Hey guys, like, what's everyone struggling with?" And they're like, "Stop guruing." (laughs) What the fuck? What are you talking about? Stop <laughs> guruing. And then, and then some guys messaged me, hey, do you have a team? I was like, yeah, I've got like nine employees. He's like, oh, but do you actually go out in the field and clean windows? And I was like, no, not anymore, but I, I did for a long time. He's like, oh, well, I'm banning you because you don't put squeegee to glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, great. Bunch of dorks, dude. Bunch of I dorks. remember last year, I, um, I was pretty active in those groups when you know the season was kind of first getting started. Um, and after like the, the first like six months of washing, I kind of posted all of you know what we did, like the revenue profit margins, you know, where everything came from, just to like be super transparent and help some of the, the guys that are just starting out. And there were like hundreds of comments, scam, stop trying to sell something. But I was like, I I sell nothing. Like I'm literally just posting all of this to kind of like <laughs> help you guys out. And the, the the amount of toxicity in those groups is absolutely insane. Um and just the limiting beliefs and, and people, you know, really don't realize that you can do bigger numbers and it doesn't just have to be a job where you're, you know, like you said, making like five, 10 K a month profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, I mean, for us though, it makes the competition not as, you know, aggressive and there's just more, more houses out there to soft wash. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent, man, dude, this was great, man. I would love to, uh, I would love to be, a, what's the word I'm looking for here. Keep, keep us posted. Keep us posted on, on the journey. I want to know what happens. I want to know the updates. He's, so. he's going to be in Miami tomorrow. That's, that's yeah. going to be the journey. Be like, Dude, I sold everything, bro. I'm in Miami. I burned it all down. Rampo- yeah. Rampola Marketing's going to the moon. <laughs> Got the Lambo wrapped. Uh, I spent all the money in the, in the business bank account for a down payment on a Lambo. Got to put my back against the wall. <laughs> no, dude, but seriously, man, keep us posted. Let us know what you decide to do. Um, and if we could ever be of help to you, you let us know, man. We're here for you, man. I appreciate awesome. you coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. If anybody wants to reach out to you and get in, get in touch, uh, how can they do so? Um, Twitter is probably going to be the best method. Um, I think my if you just look up Andrea and Pula right on Twitter, you can find me there. I'm super active in my DMs. Um, but I like Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff. Just shoot me a message, message, and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you. Uh, I always yeah, love he's, chatting. He's with. got a really, he's got a profile pic with some really thick eyebrows, just looking like a Chad. So you can't miss him. We'll <laughs> no. put his link. We'll put his link down below. <laughs> cool. All right. See you guys in the next one. Yep. Peace. Appreciate your time, Andrew. All right. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one. Okay.